I thought, how could that be a reward? Seeing your son who you loved your whole life and trusted and had faith in hanging from a cross, how could that be reward? Mary was Jesus' <coughs> earthly mother. But Jesus never ignored her. Matter of fact, on the cross, he rewarded her by sharing her with his beloved disciples. He said, dear woman, here is your son. This reveals a prophecy concerning Mary. For we find in the Old Testament, a sword shall pierce your own soul also. We find those words. How did she suffer? I'm sure she suffered physically when she brought Jesus into the world through childbirth in a manger. I'm sure she suffered shame and reproach and gossip when she was found to be with child before the marriage was consummated with Joseph. She fled to Egypt to save her child. But countless innocent children died because of her child. How do you think Mary felt about all that? She would have suffered emotionally, wouldn't have she? There was a growing separation between Mary and Jesus when Jesus declared to her one day, Don't you know that I must be about my father's business. A sword shall pierce your side. She felt the climax of Simon's prophecy at the cross when she witnessed the death of her son. And she suffered because of the way he died <clears throat> and how he died openly, publicly, and shamefully. Mary stood there, feeling the pain of the sword through her soul. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? John, the beloved disciple, to him it was a place of responsibility. How many of you have went to a funeral home when you really didn't want to? So why do you do it? Because it's a place of responsibility, isn't it? I always ask myself the question, if it was me that passed away, would this person be here? And if I answer in my head, yes, they would have, then guess what? I go. Had a good friend, David Poletta, passed away about, oh, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, maybe eight years ago. And David and I never agreed a whole lot on a lot of things, but we were still friends. You ever have a friend that is a friend, but you just don't quite get what they're doing a lot of times? And when Dave died, I knew if it would have been me, he would have been there. And I knew that place would be packed and folks would be lined up forever. But I went and I waited to hug his wife and shake his children's hands and share a sense of their loss. For John to be at the cross was to stand at a place of responsibility. A place we can understand and relate to. But John stood at the cross, restored. He, along with the other disciples at that point, had forsaken Jesus. They had fled for their own lives <laughs> at the Garden of Gethsemane. But John came back to the cross. 
and was restored and was forgiven. Guilty. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I need to run. But I'm always glad when we come back to the cross and we're forgiven and restored. The Bible says our shortcoming, our sin is separated from us as far as the east is from the west. Never more to be remembered. Last Sunday night we started talking a little bit about being a disciple of Jesus. Being a disciple, we look at the traits of the early disciples. They strayed, they denied God. Sometimes we stray, but they always, always came back to the cross. It doesn't matter what we've done. The cross is a place to go for forgiveness, for deliverance, for restoration. For John to stand at the cross was probably not the safest place in the world for him to be. But he came back to the cross. John writes years later in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How much is all? It's everything, isn't it? All has no boundaries. And John says, he will cleanse us from all righteousness. You know, this week I've heard a lot of that army sergeant in Afghanistan that done a number of terrible things. And he's standing trial for it. But was Paul any different? Paul went around murdering people, didn't he? Saul, before he became Paul. The cross. Jesus Christ who will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Jesus even told John, take care of his mother in his absence. He had fled. He was gone. He wanted nothing to do with Jesus. But when Jesus was on the cross, he looked directly at him and said, Take care of my mom. Jesus not also only forgave John, but he also gave him a lot of responsibility with the care of his mother. <clears throat> How important is your mom to you today? If your mom's around, how important is she to you? Would you trust her with just anybody in her older age? You would be pretty selective, wouldn't you? Who you would give the care to your mom to. I would be. Probably more than some. My mom's pretty special to me. But Jesus looked down to John and he said, take care of my mom. Guys, we are no different today. We are absolutely no different than any of those disciples if we believe in Jesus Christ. If things in your life got out of hand, come to the cross. Make it right. Ask for forgiveness. And then be responsible for what you do from then on. Jesus loves us. He cares for us. He'll give us responsibilities. But we must be faithful to follow through on them. Amen? If you're struggling with something this morning, grab a hand somewhere. Pray with somebody before you leave. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this teaching on the cross, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that all of us 
will draw closer to it. That we'll find hope, that we'll find help, that we'll find encouragement, that we'll find restoration in the cross. And our Savior who hung on it suffered, blood, and died for each of us, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit to minister to hearts today. Father God, be with us till we can meet again. Guide and direct our lives. Keep your path bright as a bright light open to us, Lord. Allow us to walk in faith and trust in you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, you are dismissed. Thank you. <laughs>